welcome to this NPTEL lecture on reflector antenna systems. But before going there, actually in the last lecture, we have uh, discussed about corrugated horn. That time I forgot to show you some diagrams. So, a corrugated conical horn this is conical, but a corrugated section looks like this in the input feeding section there is a tapered thing and then in the radiating zone or near the aperture there is this corrugation. Now, this is the you can say side view, but if we look at the things actually corrugations means this that some portion you are removing the metals. So, this is for a planar surface corrugation looks like this. So, on those two surfaces on this surface these are the corrugations that means, these portions are metallic, but between portions are non metallic similarly here. So, that is extending throughout the surface. So, this I you please add this portion to the previous lecture. Now, today we start with the reflector antenna. Oh sorry. Hmm. So, at micro frequencies, this is mostly used antenna and majority of satellite links use this reflector antenna systems. The geometry of the reflector system you can see here we are seeing it as a paraboloidal because this is actually the conic section paraboloid which is obtained by revolving this parabola about this axis. If this is the axis of the parabola if you revolve it you get the paraboloid. So, the reflector is the paraboloid, we have a feed horn at the focus of the paraboloid. So, now here uh, please understand this dashed line that we, that is called a plane, because actually if you uh, think of a dish antenna all of you have seen. Now, think that if I take from one edge to other edge, if I take a plane, that plane for the paraboloid will be a circular disc. So, this is a plane thing, this is called aperture, aperture surface. So, actually it is a circular disc, planar disc for this paraboloid thing. So, rays that are going from this feed, if they go here after getting reflected from the paraboloid that becomes parallel to the axis similarly here. Now, uh, the this diameter of this aperture is 2 a or radius is a. Now, this this is an important ratio as we will see that this f by 2 a or f by d that is a specification for a parabola, because it determines all its radiation properties. f by d ratio people generally call it. <coughs> now, we first find out, because we will have to put our previously derived result that if I know the aperture field distribution that means, if I know the field distribution on this aperture I will be able to say what is the field that we have seen the by Fourier transform method etcetera. So, we will have to know what is this aperture's uh, equation etcetera. Now, parabola equation we know. So, from the basic geometry now we will derive the geometry of this thing. So, the other portions of the drawing I will come later. So, I can say that let me 
draw a parabola and this is its point let us say the focus I am calling O and the suppose I have an incident ray from here that ray is coming to the focal plane and the point where the parallel ray meets the focal plane let me call that as point Q and this point let me call it P where the ray has hit. Now, from the parabola's basic any conic section if you remember that if from the distance from the focus to any point on the conic section uh, that is always a constant. If you remember the conic section which has two focuses. So, from a point on the section if you add those two points distance focus suppose I have a ellipse and it has you know two focus. So, this is a point. So, sum of these two distances is always equal to twice of the focus. So, here the same thing we can say that O p plus p q that is equal to twice f a constant. Okay. Now, you can see from the geometry that this angle is theta. So, if this this rays or this distance is r then this will be r cos theta. So, I can put that r plus r cos theta is equal to 2 f or r is equal to 2 f by 1 plus cos theta or I can say this is f sec square theta by 2. So, this is the this r that means, if I take the r here then the corresponding theta I will have to say and this equation will be satisfied. So, basically the paraboloid is a locus of this point r. Okay. Generally, the horn is placed at the primary focus as a feed. Now, here actually the analysis uh, for that we will assume that since this is a microwave thing, uh, we assume that ray optics which has a strong foundation from Maxwell's equation actually Sir Jagadish Bose proved that optics also obeys Maxwell's equation for the first time he proved it because Maxwell did not say that explicitly he just conjectured probably these laws which I have found they also uh, are valid for optics, but Sir Jesse Bose proved it. So, we will take help of ray, ray optics at this fields and it had been seen that those laws hold good here because the results obtained after this fully matches with the experimental observations. So, the relevant results that I will take that is called that locally all the waves are plane waves. Actually in ray optics this holds good because their wavelength is very small, but here also we will assume this that locally all the rays. So, first thing is the uh, waves travel in a ray that we will assume here also um, actually in a tube of ray because we have a beam. So, that is why tube of ray and locally they behave as a plane wave and propagates in straight line along straight rays in homogeneous medium. At a boundary between medium they are reflected 
or refracted at the tangent plane according to Snell's law and the Fresnel reflection coefficient holds good. The power is viewed as flowing in flux tube and if a flux tube is reflected from a perfectly conducting surface, the power in the reflected flux tube equals that in the incident flux tube. These are all these results you know, just I am saying it that the electric and magnetic fields are transported along the flux tubes. The electric and magnetic fields are mutually perpendicular and orthogonal to the rays because rays are the direction of propagation since it is plane waves. So, electric and magnetic fields are orthogonal to these. Okay. And for the paraboloid surface, all rays from focus are reflected to become parallel to axis. At the edges, the rays are diffracted, but we will neglect the effect of diffraction in this analysis. I already said that the aperture is a plane in this case, which is circular disc just in front of the surface. Now, after saying all this, my actual intention is that we have already seen the horn antenna. So, this we know the radiation, suppose we know the radiation pattern of this feed horn, but to calculate what is happening to the radiated field by the reflector, we need to find this field distribution on this aperture. So, we now relate that if I know this power radiation pattern of the feed, what will be the aperture field distribution? This will be our first task, but before that I will want to show you uh, two slides. Ah, what about I said that reflection of a flux tube, if you have a plane reflector, then this is the incident flux tube and then this is the reflected flux tube. What I said, this is the central ray, there are other rays, these are the two edge rays. So, you see that E and H field, they are orthogonal. So, E, H and the ray, they form a triplet, etcetera. So, this is plane reflector, but we do not have a plane reflector. So, I will have to see some uh, next slide. Ah, so, our case will be like this, we are having an incident tube, then that incident tube will go here uh, on the one ray is shown, but actually here also there will be a tube and incident tube thing and the reflected tube total power that should be conserved. Because this we are assuming to be a conducting surface. Okay. So, with that I again go back here. Now, you see that actually uh, you see that there are two ways by which this parabola reflector can be analyzed. One is the way I am saying that aperture field I will calculate and from aperture field we know what is the far field etcetera that yesterday we uh, in the last lectures we have derived. But there are also people can say that I can also find out at this paraboloid reflector what is the current because this is not an aperture problem because this is a real uh, 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 paraboloid conducting surface is there. So, I can find the conduction current here and from that also I can find the thing. Both methods are there, this is called induced current method by which wire antennas are analyzed. So, that can be done. Also, this aperture is a uh, aperture. So, that is why here from the field we do. So, we will take the aperture field method because it will help us to illustrate what we have, we have derived for planar antennas etcetera. So, for that 
let me introduce that suppose g theta phi is the power angular radiation pattern of the feed located at the focus. This is actually horn antenna, we are not saying horn because there can be other things also, but mostly in all the cases it is horn. So, g theta phi is the power angular because I am saying it is expressed in terms of theta phi. So, so can I say that g theta phi by r square is the power per unit area radiated by the feed. Okay. Now, the power incident on the reflector power incident on the reflector in the flux tube of angular width d theta d phi is what? You see that I am saying that I have this. Now, this is d theta and in the azimuthal plane there will be a d phi. So, in that tube how much power is there? Let that is called p i theta phi. So, that I can easily calculate because I know this. So, p i theta phi is g theta phi by r square into the area in that angular strip and can I say that what will be that area? One will be r sin theta d theta, another will be r d phi. Okay. So, this is then got. So, actually you will see that this r will get cancelled. Now, this same power from the law of optics this same power must appear in the reflected flux tube and for the reflected flux tube you see that. So, suppose this d theta d phi this power has gone here, this is that tube incident tube. Now, while it is reflected you see I have something like it will occupy the portion if I call that the distance from the center this uh, variable is rho this becomes a cylindrical type of thing. So, can I say that d rho d phi that will tell me uh, because now no more theta is there because this has now become a uh, straight rays. So, in d rho d phi direction in d rho and, and strip consisting of d rho d phi it is variation of these two parameters whatever power is there that should be equal. So, I can say 
that this same power must appear in the reflected flux tube of width d rho on the aperture surface. So, I can say that this should be equal to and for that suppose it produces a power density per unit area in the aperture surface it will produce a power density per aperture area in the unit surface and let me call that or let me change it that let me call this p rho phi is the power density power density reflected to uh, power density or power per unit area let me say power per area reflected to the aperture surface within width d rho and angular spread in azimuth d phi so i can say that p rho phi then rho d phi and d rho this is the total power that should be equal to that p i theta phi So, I can say that this p i theta phi already I have shown that it is g theta phi sin theta d theta d phi. So, let me write p rho phi and in place of this row to cancel out I write row is what from the figure you can see it is nothing but r sin theta. So, r sin theta d rho d phi is g theta phi sin theta d theta d phi that solve my problem. So, I can say that also uh, since rho is equal to r sin theta, achha, so let me simplify this first. So, this is p rho phi will be g theta phi 1 by r d theta d rho. Okay. Now, this d rho d theta needs to be evaluated. I know what is the relation between rho and theta. So, I have rho is equal to r sin theta. So, d rho d theta will be 2 f also r sin theta means I can put r value I can put 2 f. So, that it become constant otherwise r is a variable, but 2 f sin theta by 1 plus cos theta. Now, you differentiate with respect to this that becomes 2 f by 1 plus cos theta. So, now you put it there. So, you get p 
रो फाइव ठीक है अच्छा ओके यू नीड टू हैव समथिंग टू एफ वन प्लस कॉस थीटा नाउ सम मोर एल्जेब्रिक मैनिपुलेशन सो आई कैन से वन प्लस कॉस थीटा बाय साइन थीटा इज टू एफ बाय रो सो यू कैन राइट वन प्लस कॉस थीटा होल स्क्वायर माइनस साइन स्क्वायर थीटा बाय वन प्लस कॉस थीटा होल स्क्वायर प्लस साइन स्क्वायर थीटा will be 4 f square minus rho square by 4 f square plus rho square. Also, we have that 1 by r is 1 plus cos theta plus 2 f. So, all that if you put finally, I can write p rho phi is g theta phi 16 f square by 4 f square plus rho square. So, this is the expression I was finding out that what is the power density at the aperture. I know g theta phi everything else you see that is constant. So, at a particular rho if you ask me that what is the power density putting that value I can tell you. That means, at all points on the power aperture which is a circular disc I now know the power density. So, my rho varies from 0 to a or 0 to uh, or you can say plus a to minus a. So, I put and I get. So, now I know the power distribution on the antenna. Now, from here we will take certain things that you have seen that it is always better or we have not seen that, but please note actually due to lack of time we did not do that. If an aperture is illuminated uniformly that gives us the maximum radiation. That means, the radiation is in the broadside direction and peaks. Actually, uh, from array theory concept you can see that when we uniformly illuminate the array elements then also you get a peak. In other cases you do not get because all are constructively added. The same thing in a distributed fashion that if you uniformly illuminate with same phase distribution same um, uh, amplitude then you get very peaky thing along the broad side. So, that is always desirable because that gives you maximum directivity thing. So, always that is a dream. So, if I want to make p theta rho phi uniform, then what is my requirement on g theta phi? From here you can see that g theta phi should be proportional to this um, sec 4 theta by 2. How just you put it bring this angle theta because this thing is actually this this relation that the 1 plus cos theta by 2 f actually by putting angle or you can say that see the other way that g theta phi suppose a, uh, a thing the feed is uniform the feed giving you uniform radiation then p rho phi will be proportional to this 16 f square by 4 pi square f square which is nothing but 1 plus cos theta whole square you will see that. So, that is so I will rather write otherwise you that if g theta phi constant then p rho phi from this expression becomes 1 plus cos theta whole square which is 4 cos 4 theta by 2. 
So, that says that the aperture is not getting uniformly illuminated. So, there is a distribution and where is the maximum aperture field that is obvious uh, power that is obviously at the theta is equal to 0. So, compared to the center the edges of the aperture that means, here I get maximum radiation and here I get minimum radiation. So, this in reflector term in people call it there is a taper in the amplitude if we have this. Now, this is not desirable rather we the other thing is desirable we want to have to have p theta phi constant. So, your g theta phi that means, the feed pattern that should be proportional to sec fourth theta by 2. Now, what do you mean by that g theta phi sec fourth theta by 2 that means, for theta is equal to 0 that means, at the central location the sec theta is 1 and for other places that means, at the edge that is very high. Now, that is a, what will happen that actually that means, what we are saying that it is having very high power in this 90 degree directions. So, and very small power in this that means, minimum here radiating and so we will see that that will give that many power will be lost the reflector will not be able to intercept that power that is called spillover loss we will come later to spillover loss. So, it is not very desirable. So, that means, this is optimum, but this is not desirable and practically we cannot do that because that will give rise to high spillover loss. So, it will definitely give us very high directivity this choice if I make I will get very high directivity, but the efficiencies they will be kill that directivity. So, that is why we will see that this is not done and also here I will say that wh what is the angle because you see that though I can make this parabola reflector come to this pi by 2, but we do not do that because then uh, our aperture becomes very small. So, up to certain angle it is there. So, that is called angular aperture that means, if I have a paraboloid. So, this angle is called psi or psi by 2. So, this angle is also psi by 2. So, that means, angular aperture of the paraboloid is psi. So, at that point what is the value of rho? Rho is A. So, rho at at extreme point or edge at extreme point or edge of the paraboloid rho is definitely equal to their A and that is 2 f sin psi by 2 by 1 plus cos psi by 2 the parabola equation. So, this is nothing but 2 f tan psi by 4. So, I said that basically you see this psi is governing the whole thing. So, this thing people also sometimes this whole thing is specified by specifying the f by d, d means 2 a. So, f by 2 a is what 1 by 4 cot psi by 4. So, sometimes if the angular aperture is specified f by d ratio is specified 
or if f by d ratio is specified I can find what is the angular aperture of the parabola. Now, here I will say that ultimately we will see that the amplitude taper what is the this that amplitude taper in the aperture field this reduces the directivity because this increases the beam width. So, reduces directivity. So, that is not desirable, but amplitude taper in the aperture field also decreases the side lobe level. This will show later. So, now this is the problem, this is the designer's problem that how much amplitude taper I will have to give, because one side it reduces directivity, another side is puts the side lobe level down. Now, in a communication problem, generally this side lobe level reduction is more important. That means, if you have an interferer nearby, then you want to put a side lobe to that place that is more important because you are not so concerned particularly communica in communication the directivity or SNR is sufficient. So, directivity is not a concern you can suffer a low gain also. So, that is preferred, but in radar type of applications there the directivity is um, prime thing and generally they do not consider they do not bother about the interference from others. So, they are actually this is the thing that what is the optimum value of the taper, taper so that I can get maximum anything, but this thing qualitatively you remember always because this is the dilemma in which a designer always um, uh, sees. So, this is important I now that compromises actually our whole study of engineering. Actually, the next lectures will be actually how an engineer makes that compromise between these. Okay. So, I stop it here. In the next lecture, we will see now we have got the aperture field, we can immediately find out what is the directivity of this antenna. Thank you.